<laughs> How's everybody today? I hope you're fine. Uh, the top of our uh, bulletin it says, We'll sing to the Lord a new song. Scripture reading today is from 1 Chronicles 16, 23 to 31. A reading from the NIV. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let them sing among the nations, the Lord reigns. It's a pleasure to have Joe Hassler come give us a word from the Lord. Good morning, how are you guys today? Good. I would just like to start off by uh, sharing some some updated information for those of you who attend uh, Pastor McShane's uh, Thursday night study slash prayer meeting. I know that he has, uh, well, at least he claims that he has requested prayers for me and my wife as we are we were looking for a place to move and and uh, thankfully today we are signing a lease on a new place to rent and so we are thankful for your prayers and uh, your thoughts on that subject. Will you pray with me this morning? Dear God, we thank you that we are able to come together today in the rain and sunshine that you have provided most graciously. We thank you that we are here to worship you because of the wonderful, mighty, and great things that you do for us each and every day, Lord. We ask that as we look to to you and to look what worship can look like, Lord, that in all that we do, we give you praise and glory. And it is in your Son's name we say, Amen. When God's people begin to praise and worship him, using the biblical methods he gives, the power of his presence comes among his people in an even greater measure. Graham Truscott said that about worship. This morning I would like to try a little, a little experiment, if you will. So I would like everyone to get nice and comfortable in their position, get a little space if you need it, and close your eyes as I ask you to picture what a perfect moment of worship for you looks like. So if we could close our eyes together and imagine. Is there a huge, big choir singing in your form of worship? Or is there soft piano playing in the background? Is there a long, long, long sermon? Or a short few ideas and challenges and encouragements spoken? Is there communion? Is there lots of time for prayer? Or just a short prayer here and there? Is the sanctuary large and filled with many people? Or is it small and intimate with just a little number of people with you? As you picture this perfect form of worship, I want you to now change your, your thoughts on what would it like be like for your best friend or your, for your spouse and their perfect worship? Is there a big choir singing for them in their perfect worship? 
Or is it a small group of people singing? Is it a long sermon or a short sermon for them? Do they like communion and have it? Do they have a lot of prayer time for them? Is their sanctuary large or small? As you open your eyes, I would like to, to challenge and to think that as we sat here, each and every one of us had a different opinion and thought of what a perfect moment of worship was for ourselves. And as we then transition to thinking about what our best friend or spouse or their neighbor thought of worship, that changed as well. And what I would like to encourage us to think about when we talk about worship is that the differences that each and every one of us had in our own individual worship service just now in our head is wonderful and beautiful. And those that we thought for the other person, again, is wonderful and beautiful. Because God has created us differently and connects with us in a special, unique, personal way. The definition of worship in many dif uh, dictionaries is this. Worship is the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity, or Yahweh for us and God. It is also the acts or rites that make up a formal expression of reverence. So let us start there. When we picture a worship service, when we picture how we worship God, are we picturing a time of expression and reverence and adoration for God? Would you picture, what you pictured, was it for God to be glorified? Was it to find a connection with God? Or was it for ourselves? Many of us, sadly, have our moments of selfishness. But when it comes to worship, in my opinion, we have two goals. The first, like the great commandment, is to love God. And so we are to be giving God back the glory and the praise that he alone is worthy. And this is because worship is an invitation from God to be with him, to praise him. It is a time that we are coming back to God to give praise, thanks, and honor for all that he has done for us. Which, of course, is a great deal, and we don't always exhaust the list of things that he's done for us. We try, but we don't always make the list as deep and long as it truly is. The second, which is like the second part of the great commandment, is about helping others connect with God and worship as well. Which, of course, is a great deal, and sometimes we do a great job at it, and other times we we don't, but that's okay, because we are there to help his family connect to him in as many different ways that we can to help connect as many different people as we can. I would bet that there are as many, and has been as many different times in this church and in this very sanctuary that God has been worshipped and his people have been connected, all his people. That God has been given such a deep, heartful, heart-filled praise and glory. And while doing so, others have felt his presence and have connected to him as well. And that God has been moved to speak to his people even more deeply in those times. And sadly, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we miss the mark. Sometimes we are more focused on ourselves or on our dramas, on our stress that we have on the outside, and it distracts us, it disconnects us from seeing and worshiping God. Thankfully, we are not unique in that. And across the country and across the world, all Christians at times are distracted when they try to worship. But thankfully, God is faithful, and God still shows up, 
and still blesses and talks to us. The struggle of worship has been an ongoing issue since the fall and leaving the garden. Cain and Abel had different forms and approaches to honoring God. And sadly, we know how that story ended. While studying the term worship, the Old Testament is a very interesting It's a very interesting study because in the Old Testament the the forms the verses on worship tend to be more about how not to worship. It tells us how to not to fall into the trap of other gods and other idols like the other groups. But yet when we when we go to the New Testament, the, the talks of idol worshiping drops. So maybe they finally got it. Maybe we finally advanced a little bit in our understanding of worship. So when we talk about today, and we talk about worship, and we think about it, if God were to write us a, a letter today, what would he talk to us about when it comes to worship? Would we be encouraged on what we've done? Would we be encouraged to work on more, on different things? Would we be told we are do, doing great at this and great at that? Would we be talking about idol worshiping? Would we talk about music? Would we talk about carpet color? Or would we be talking about, you are worshiping my children, I am proud of you. When we talk about worship, for me personally, I have preferences, I have choices that I like to have happen. I like music, and I like a lot of music. But that doesn't always connect well for other people. Me and my wife have been married for eight years, and I know in our household we differ on the level of noise, if you will, or music in our house. And I have learned over the years, much to my displeasure at times, that quietness can be just as connecting as music. And I hope she can say that music and noise can be just as connecting as quietness. You'll have to ask her later. It doesn't make either one of us wrong. It doesn't make either one of us more right than the other. What it does, though, is it connects both of us and it enriches both of our spiritual lives to learn how to worship in a different way that's a little bit more uncomfortable naturally for one of us. Worship is one of the special times that we have with God and with others. We are to share how we connect with God. We are to teach each other. We are to serve and to learn how to worship God together to give God the glory and honor. We might find that connecting one way is beautiful and growing in another way encourages and strengthens us to worship God in a more deepful, deepful and meaningful way. We, are also, we also might learn that God has grown us to appreciate the different spiritual connections and spiritual ways to connect with Him. When we worship God, we draw closer to Him, and we draw closer together as His children and His family. Today, I want to encourage us to remember the reasons why we worship and why we come to together to worship. Today, we, we come together to worship to honor God, to give love, to give glory and praise to Him, and to strengthen our relationships with each other. We are here to worship the creator of all things, to grow closer to him. Jack Hayford puts it this way, worship changes the worshiper into the image of the one worshiped. Are we growing into the image of Christ or are we growing into the image of more of ourselves in this world? Tim Hughes, puts it this way. Worship must be Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led, and a response to the Father about intimacy and service 
can always lead to transformation. As we worship and we praise and honor and give thanks to God, we are transformed because it is, again, an invitation from him to be a part of his work and his process of healing and reconciliation to him for us together. Will you pray with me one last time? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are the creator of all things, that you are all-powerful and all-good. Lord, we thank you that you have brought us at your invitation to worship together and to praise you. Lord, today as we as we come to worship and we go from worship, we ask that you continue to grow us, to challenge us, to equip us to be more Christ-like. We ask that you keep us safe and you bring us back together in your time. In your son's name we say, amen. And thank you for coming out this morning and let's pray. Lord, uh, keep us safe for the week and, and uh, thank you for all you've done for us. And as you go out, as we go out, uh, just bless us and uh, help us to let other people know about you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.